AQA, A-Level Physics, Coulomb's Law. And this bit of the specification is what we're going to be doing. So, 1785, Charles Coulomb, Charles Coulomb invented the, uh, investigated the force between charged objects. Um, you remember that Cavendish used a thing called a torsion balance to measure the force between masses, and Coulomb did a very similar thing measuring the force between charges, okay, electrostatic forces. Uh, and he came up with something that was very similar to Newton's universal law of gravitation. Basically, if you've got two charges, Q1 and Q2, and if they're the same, they'll repel each other. If they're opposite charges, they'll attract each other. But the force between them is proportional to Q1, Q2, and inversely proportional to the square of their separation, as in from center to center. Now, <clears throat> the value of k, the constant in that qu equation, is about 9 times 10 to the 9. And in an exam, you, you're usually told to use a value of 9 times 10 to the 9 uh, if, you, if you've got that sum to work out. What it actually is, it's a, a combination of two other universal constants. There's pi and there's something called epsilon naught. So the constant in the equation is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, which I'll talk about in a sec. So the full equation, F equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over R squared. Very similar to F equals G M1 M2 over R squared, isn't it? Epsilon naught. Uh, 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter and it's called the permittivity of free space and it's how easily an electric field can pass through a vacuum free space is another name for a vacuum now how well the electric field passes through something depends on the medium um, in this case it's a vacuum if we're talking about air then the permittivity of air is almost exactly the same as that of a vacuum. So we just use epsilon naught. Yeah, I think that the relative permittivity of air is about 1.01. It's slightly bigger. So uh, do this sum. Calculate the force between two charged spheres whose centers are blah, carry a charge of blah. Uh, pen paper calculator pause the video and the answer is that a point to be made we're talking a I mentioned a uniformly charged sphere so you've all seen like a van de Graaff generator the metal dome on a van de Graaff imagine that's what we're talking about or almost a balloon so all the charges on the surface and when uh, we say the value of R, that's the value of R from the center. There is this idea of a, a point charge. If we're thinking about kind of an electron, I mean, what's the size of an electron? It's almost zero. We think of an electron as being a point charge. And if my point charge has a charge Q, then obviously it's the distance from it. If it's a uniformly charged sphere, it's the distance from the center. If the charge was the same, they would have the same effect. This is different from masses because you can't get a point mass unless you're actually talking about a black hole. There, there's no such thing as a point mass, but you can have a point charge. Here's another sum for you to do. Two protons in a helium nucleus and I've given you the mass, I've given you the charge, I've given you the separation from center to center, and compare the gravitational force of attraction uh, between the electrostatic force of repulsion between them and comment on your answer. So you should be able to do this now. Pause the video, have a go, and the answers are, Okay, so the, the gravitational force of attraction is tiny, 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 
4.7 times 10 to the minus 35 newtons. The repulsive force is about 57 newtons. It is massive, okay? Uh, in general, electrostatic forces are much, much bigger than gravitational forces, which is why Coulomb had a much easier job than Cavendish did.